Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, rich guy, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. All right. Now, last week, we finished chapter 1. What did we discover? Ruth was from Moab. She was a Moabitess. The people of Moab are cursed. They don't get to inherit any of the blessings. All right? And furthermore, she has one other thing against her. Her husband, was, who was weak, destined to die, died. So now she's a widow. Moabitess, curse, under the law, curse, and then was a widow on top of that. But the only thing which she said correctly was, I want to go back with you, Naomi, to where you came from because I know your God. And that's all she knew. That's all Ruth knew. So now, she's going to go back with Naomi back to Bethlehem, Judah. All right? And here is the start of the story. We are told some background information here, all right? Now, Ruth doesn't know any of these things. Ruth doesn't know who Boaz is, but we are given some background information. All right? So let's start from verse 2. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, they have already returned now, let me now go to the fields. All right? So she went back home. Remember, it was a time of famine, but now God has started providing again. Ruth said to Naomi, because Naomi is older, Ruth is younger, Ruth says, let me go to the fields. There are many fields. When God provides, God provides. There are many fields, and Ruth doesn't know where she is because it's her first time in this strange land. She says, let me go out into the fields to do what? To glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. After him, meaning after God. All right? So, she knows that there is God. She doesn't know how good God is, but she's going to taste it very soon. So, she says, man, we don't have any food. We just came back. So, let me go into the fields, all right? There are many fields. She says, I'm going to go into this field and I'm going to glean ears of corn, all right? The word glean here is a term which was very familiar in that time because it is part of the law, all right? So let me show you exactly where this law came in, all right? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. Leviticus 19, verse 9 and 10. All right? This is part of the law. So you are supposed to do it. All right? All the Israelites are supposed to do it. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither will you gather the gleanings of your harvest. All right? Next verse. Verse 10. And you shall not glean your vineyard. Neither shall you gather every grape of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. All right? So you can see it was part of the law. What did this law say again? This law says, when you, who have all these fields, vineyards, when you harvest the crop, you know, the, let's say you have a field. So, no machines back then, all right? So, the people will go through the field and they'll pick up all the good corn. 
all the good barley, all the good harvest. And then they'll come back again and they'll gather some more, they'll go back, they'll come back, you know, to and fro, and they gather all of the good harvest. But of course, you see, they will miss some, right? They will miss some, and some are not so good. They look at it, yeah, it doesn't look good, this corn. Yeah, we'll just leave it. So the law says, when you have all these gleanings or all these which are left over from the harvest, don't collect them because they are for the poor and the stranger. Ruth. Was Ruth poor? Yes, she had nothing. Was she a stranger, a foreigner in the land? Yes, she just came from another place and now she's in this place. So she's the poor and the stranger. By the way, the poor and the stranger usually refer to the Gentiles. Because the Jews believed they were blessed by God, so therefore, all those people who are not blessed were the other people. So Gentiles were considered poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. One more scripture to show you. Deuteronomy 24, starting from verse 19. When you cut down the harvest in your field, and has forgot a sheaf in the field, so something was left behind in the field, you will not go again to fetch it. Don't take it. Leave it behind. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow. Who is Ruth? The widow. That the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. You see, if you do it, you get blessed. If you don't do it, you get cursed. That was part of the law. We don't live under this law, but that was the law. All right? So, one more script. Let's go down. When you beat your olive tree, you shall not go over the boughs again. So, one beating, that's it. All the olives fall down, all the nice ones, and all the nice green ones, not so nice ones, if they are left there, it will be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the widow. Next verse. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not glean it afterwards. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow. One more. And you shall remember that you was also a bondman in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I command you to do this thing. All right? Now, of course, when this commandment was given, of course, you have to obey it because it was the law. In order to get blessed, you must obey it. Do good, come on, get good. Do bad, that means you don't follow this, you are going to get bad. All right? The easiest way to remember the law. Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. The law. Now, the Jewish people really didn't like this so much. They said, well, it's the law, so we have to do it, all right? So then they came up with rules, all right? So when your uh, vineyards and all, you know, uh, have the leftovers, and uh, some of them will have a dog outside. So yeah, we are leaving it for the poor and fatherless and the widows, but we have big dogs outside. So they say, no, no, you cannot have that. And some people even had to have a lion outside. Yeah, this is part of the history. So if you are poor and fatherless, you know, you are the widow, would you go into that vineyard or that field? You know, there are 10 dogs there, and there's one lion as well. No, you probably wouldn't, right? So if nobody comes to collect what is left over, then, hey, I can go and get it now, because I did the law, but nobody came. All right? And of course, then they define it even stricter. It says here, the fields, you know, where the corn is. It says the vineyard. So let's strictly define this law. So if I have a vegetable garden, you know, my, my garden stretches for miles, it's full of vegetables. Does it apply? Well, God didn't say it, so of course it doesn't apply, you see. So sorry, all you widows and fatherless people, and you know, all those people, 
you cannot come into my vegetable garden. You can gather the corn, which is left over, which I don't want anyway, but you cannot take my vegetables. So we try to restrict the law as much as possible, so we still get away with it. And of course, there were other people who say too, well, remember the first one, it says, your land. What land, you see? You see, let's go back to that particular scripture in Leviticus and say, okay, your land. So your land at that time was Palestine. So only in Palestine we do this. The moment we get out of Palestine, we will not do it. So you see how you can twist the law. And of course, the Pharisees and all those rich landowners, they twisted the law and twisted the law. You still do the law because you want to be blessed. But you don't want to do too much of it, then after that, it's too much grace. You know, too much helping other people. So you don't want to help them. So that's what people did, all right? But now let's jump back to Ruth. Now you know a little bit about the law concerning gleanings, all right? Let's jump back to Ruth. Chapter 2 again. Let me glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find grace. And she said, Naomi says to her, Go, my daughter. Look, there are many fields, all right? Many, many fields in this land. God has blessed this land. Go. Now, here is the thing. Ruth pick up the basket and just went. Let's read. Next verse. She went, so she went out, and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. All right? Reapers went through it already. Pick all the good ones. Sometimes they'll go through multiple times. And then here comes Ruth with the basket. Now, here is one word once again. Like what John says, you know, sometimes we don't understand what we are reading. And her, look at this strange word, her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, the rich guy. We were given this information just now, who was relative to Elimelech. Her hap was to, her hap, there are many fields. She could have been in this hap owned by somebody else. She could be in that field owned by somebody else. But you see, God loved the person who deserved nothing. Ruth, according to the law and according to the culture at that time, deserved nothing. Remember, according to the law, she deserved nothing as well. She was cursed. Her whole heritage was no good. Remember the scripture we read last week? Anybody from Moab was cursed. Cursed forever. Ruth was cursed. But something happened. You see, when you think you deserve nothing. And people say to you, you deserve nothing. You are no good. You will never amount to anything. You are a widow. You are cursed. Then God looks at you and says, in your weakness, you will find my strength. When you are completely undeserving, I find you completely deserving. And you are going to get blessed because you have nothing. You have nothing to give back to me and I want nothing from you because I want to show you my goodness. I want to show you who I am as your father. I want to show you what grace really is. I want to show you, even though you are unmerited, I want to show you how merited you are. 
I want to show you my love for you. Her hap, that was her position. Out of all the fields that she could go and glean from, her position was to go into Boaz's field. Boaz means he is my strength. In him is strength. In who? In Jesus is strength. So Boaz is symbolic of Jesus. Ruth is symbolic of us. We are the beautiful one, as seen by God. Other people will look and say, oh, that's ugly. Oh, I don't like that person. I'm going to condemn that person. I'm going to judge that person. And God looks and sees how beautiful you are. Ruth means beautiful friend. And that's how God sees us. That's how Jesus sees us. The beautiful one. He looks at you and says, Man, you are so beautiful. You are so beautiful to me. And not only I love you, but I am in love with you. All the sons and daughters, because he sees you as the bride. All right? He doesn't see you gender specific. He sees you as the bride of Christ. So he looks at you and says, you are so beautiful. And look at Ruth. Condemned to a life of poverty, curse, but her position never changed. The world says no. And Jesus says yes. Your hat, your position is to be in the field of Jesus. Look. Her hat was to light, that means come upon, the part of the field belonging to Boaz. In him is strength. That is your position. Your position is to come into the field belonging to Jesus. And do you think there is famine in the field of Jesus? No. Other places, famine, no food. In the field of Jesus, plenty of food. Plenty of grain. The harvest is rich. Her hap. Oh, her hap. How about your hap? Your hap, your hap. All those people here at the back, your help. Steve, your help. Your position. You see, you are never forgotten. Never forgotten by God. Your help was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz. Who was of the kindred of Elimelech? They were related. All right, next verse. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, so here comes Boaz, all right? Remember, Boaz was the wealthy man. God is always wealthy. He loves to show his children who he is. He's your father. All right? He's not somebody else's father. He is your father. Here comes Boaz. So he came to the reapers. The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. All right. Then said Boaz, remember Boaz is symbolic of Jesus, said to, the, said to his servant that was set over the reapers, Who is this woman? Meaning Ruth. Who is this damsel? Who is this beautiful woman? Who is that beautiful woman back there? Who is the beautiful woman out in front here? Who is the beautiful woman here? Who is the beautiful man over there? Who is the beautiful person way back there? Who is the beautiful man up there on the, on the, in the sound booth? Who is that beautiful person there? 
who is that beautiful woman there? Who is that beautiful woman over there? Whoa. Does Ruth know this yet? No, not yet. But that's what God thinks of you. That's what Jesus thinks of you. That's what Boaz thought of it, Ruth. Ruth was widow, childless, and cursed. And she just came to a strange land. Poor, stranger, deserved nothing. So she thought she would just go in the field. By law, she can collect some leftovers. Hey, at least I will not starve and die. Are you all liking the story so far? Do you see just a simple chapter like Ruth? Just a simple thing. All of Jesus all over the place. All right, next verse. And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, Oh, it's that Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Yeah, you know that, that person. Yeah. All right, next verse. Okay. And she says, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. All right? So this is her response. Let me, I pray you, please, let me glean, let me collect the leftovers, the things that nobody wants. Let me glean and gather after the reapers. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. So she was really working, Ruth, trying to gather the little things. You know, you don't find many things because the reapers have already gone through it. So you go, look, nothing. You go there, look, nothing. So you work in the hot sun. So she worked. She continued even from the morning until now. Ruth was busy collecting Nothing very much, if anything at all. Then said Boaz, okay, now Boaz said to Ruth, Hear, do you not hear my daughter? Did, she, did he say, you piece of scum, you poor thing, get out from my property? No. You see, when you realize how much Jesus loves you, your whole concept of yourself will change. You know, many people tell you, well, you got to change. And you say, change to what? You hear this all the time. People always say, you got to change. You got to change. You got to change. And you think, change to what? You know, I thought I was by myself. I'm okay. And then people criticize you, people judge you. And here comes Jesus telling you something completely different. Do you not hear my daughter? Do not go to glean in another field. Ruth, don't go anywhere else. This place, look at all my fields. Very rich guy, Boaz. Don't go and glean in enough. Don't go to somebody else's field. Don't go from here. Neither go from hence. But abide here. Stay here fast. That means stick close, all right? Stick close to me. By my maidens. Look, all the other people here, Ruth, you stay close. Don't go to somebody else's field. Stay close, all right? Why? Let's read on. Let your eyes be on the field they do reap. Go thou and go after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch you? All right? Nobody will touch you. You will be protected here in my field. And when you are thirsty, when you are thirsty, Ruth, go to the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Everything has already been provided. Ruth, first of all, don't go into somebody else's field. This field, stay in it. And you will get protected, number one. 
Number two, when you are thirsty, go to the vessels, all those vessels which are already provided, you drink whatever you want. Next one. Next verse, please. She fell on her face, bowed herself to the ground and said to him, Why have I found grace in your eyes? That you should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. And this is the question many, many, many people ask. In fact, many Christians ask this. Why are you so good? Why, why, do you, why, why would God be so good to me? Seeing I am a stranger, in Ruth's case. And you fill in your own blanks. God, why would you be good to me, seeing that I am a... Fill in your blanks. Put in all your thoughts which you think about yourself. Seeing I am poor, seeing I am abused, seeing I am unworthy, seeing that I have failed many times, seeing that I am not good-looking, seeing that I am this, seeing that I am that. Put in all the words you want to put in. That's what Ruth did the same thing. Why would you look at me? I have no education. I have this. You see, and we all come with the same excuse. God, why would you look at me? Why would you? Why, why have I found grace in your eyes? Because Ruth don't, didn't understand yet what grace meant. You see, she thought that she has to marry it. She has to earn it. She has to do something great. And then Boaz says, wow, look at that good servant, Ruth. I'm going to reward Ruth. But Ruth did nothing. Ruth had nothing. She was nothing. So, of course, she says, why have, I, why have I found grace? Why? Why do you look at me? I don't even look the same as all the other Jewish ladies because I'm from Moab. I look different. I behave differently. I talk different. Why do you love me? Why have I found grace in your sight, seeing that I am a stranger? Next verse, please. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully shown to me all that you have done unto your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father, your mother, and the land of your nativity and art come unto the people which you do not know before. You see, Ruth didn't know the land, didn't know where she was. She had a hard life. And Boaz knew all of this already. Jesus knew, and he knows, everything that you have been through. And in all of those things that you have been through, he says, you are my beautiful one. Let me repeat that, okay? Jesus knows exactly what you have done in the past. Every mistake you ever made, all the difficulties, all the times where you gave up, all the times you said no, you know, everything which you did wrong, he knows everything. And when he, after he knew everything, he says, you, my daughter, my son, you are my beautiful one. You see, if he doesn't know, and he says, you are my beautiful one, then you say, oh yeah, I'm not going to let God know about my past, you know, that thing which I did, you know, all those things which I said. Maybe God doesn't know it because I hid it so well. But He knows everything. And on top of that, He says, you are my beautiful one. Oh, what a beautiful person you are. How wonderful you are. I'm coming for you. Because I love you. 
Think about that. So where are you going to hide from God's love? Where are you going to say, oh, God doesn't love me. If only He knew. Yes, He knows. And He says, I love you. And that's why Ruth says, how can that be? How is that possible that I have found grace in your sight? And you might be saying the same thing. And you know something? That's what grace is. It's not about what you do or didn't do. It's about what Jesus did for you. You see, nothing to do with your actions comes from a good father who loves you regardless. Who knows everything you did and says, I love you and I accept you. And for those who are sick, I heal you, as John pointed out the word, so, so. Not only safe, but healed, protected, delivered from danger, which is what Ruth got. Everything coming from a good father towards you. And you just say, thank you, Jesus, for being so good to me. Thank you, Father, for being so good to me. And that's why we can say, Abba, Father, we are your sons, we are your daughters, and thank you, Father, for being so good to us. Despite ourselves, you love us. Despite what we do, you still love us. And that's what grace is. Unmerited favour, from God to us. And His name is Jesus. Amen.